And Dave, let's move on. But before we move on into the Suns pick, I'm going to tell you guys about Apple Podcast. The Fast Break is on Apple Podcast. You can go check us out. Every review we get is basically the greatest to us because the more five-star ratings we get, the more ears we are able to get into, or as I like to call them, the ear holes um, that we get to go into. So if you could, you have not already, please look for the Fast Break on Apple Podcasts and give us that five-star rating. But to segue us into the next topic, the Suns. Yes, sir. There is rumors that the Suns are dangling the number six pick for a veteran point guard. And right away, names were flying. Yeah, Mike Conley, Reggie Jackson. Um, I've heard Jeff Teague from the Timberwolves. You've got George Hill I've seen out there. One also was a certain Lonzo Ball. That was shot down by a... Um, by Lonzo himself? Not by Lonzo himself, <laughs> but by a Suns inside reporter basically said, stop that, it ain't happening, no way they're trading the sixth for Lonzo Ball. Yeah. The thing I want to ask you with this is, do you see the Suns trading the sixth overall pick and Josh Jackson, because it looks like they want to use that to get Josh Jackson out the door as well. Right. But do you see them trading the sixth overall pick for a veteran point guard? It's a big ask because it comes down to the point of if you believe that Devin Booker is getting restless Mm -hmm. and your best answer right now is to get him someone who can help him win now, then yes, it, it, it's completely, and I hate saying it, but like it feels like it's on the on the judgment of what you can do to keep Devin Booker happy because you don't want him, you've got him on the long term deal, you don't mm-hmm. want him to be disgruntled. We just yeah. watched what that can do to a team, and you know the value of that player and everything around it. So I think the timeline for them doesn't need to be accelerated by going after one of those point guards. Yes, would it be an awesome fit if I was playing two K? Absolutely. But, like, I don't know that this is a team that needs desperately to strike at a Mike Conley or a Jeff Teague or someone of that like. I think that they can go ahead and make an offer. I know Ricky Rubio uh, mm-hmm. from, unfortunately, they just got rid of Igor. Uh, but Ricky <laughs> Rubio uh, made it pretty clear that he's not a priority for his team. So he might be available in free agency. There's mm-hmm. a couple other guys who are going to be free agents as well who you might be able to take a stab at. There's I would also not... talks of a Spencer Dinwiddie trade after July 1st. Yep. I would not make a move harshly to go ahead because, look, just in order, like Mike Conley, very good point guard. Mm -hmm. He's old. It's just that easy. It's, you know, do you want to be, like, paying him good money because his contract will end. You still won't be championship range, but by Mm -hmm. the end of his contract, you better have either another one for him or the next guy up is ready. So I'm I'm already out on him. The timeline doesn't match. Well, and the thing that I was trying to look up really quick is – because I personally am already putting together my mock draft for next week, which, yeah. by the way, is going to be our last mock draft. So you guys should check it out Get next week. Hyped. And James Jones, who's the GM for the um, uh, Suns, he was on a radio show in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was on Arizona Sports 98.7. Um, and the quote that he had is, So he goes, for the most part, our team is all under 22. So if you try to add someone that's 33, 34 years old, it usually just doesn't work. Ah. There's too much of a gap, especially when you factor in the speed and pace of the game has increased. The elite players, there's very few of those guys between the age of 32 and 35 that maintain a high level and can take a jump. And that's to me of like... What exactly, like, what kind of a veteran guard are they going to look for? Like, Mike Conley, to me, wouldn't be a bad decision, Mm -hmm. only because he's not somebody that's locked down for so long term. Like, if he doesn't work out this year, you're not married to him for life. What he's done, basically, after next year, you've got the 2020 season, which Mm -hmm. I'm assuming Mike Conley's going to take that $34 million. Um, I don't think he'll basically be like, yeah, I can get more because he probably won't. Probably Um, won't, yeah. So you're only locked into him for two years. But the thing you brought up is the big kind of double-edged sword they're playing with. Yep. They've got Devin Booker right now. They've got Devin Booker while he's good. 
the fact is like, what do you want to be? Do you want to be the team that got all the pieces and got your player ready to go as he was entering his prime? Or do you want to be the team that befuddled around, had high draft picks, couldn't hit the guys, and then we're looking at a 28-29 Devin Booker. I know this is like years in the future. It is. But we're looking at that going, man, the Suns really wasted Devin Booker. Like yeah. They really wasted him away. Because when you get <laughs> Anthony to, Davis. Basically. Um, because when you get to that kind of 26, 27, 25, that's when it's like, okay, I'm entering my prime. Yep. This is my prime of basketball. And right now, they've to me, they've got to act sooner rather than later because, yeah, Devin Booker's only 22, but if you wait too many years, it's going to pass you by and you might miss that guy that you're looking for. I was waiting for the uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off there reference, but you just you, you went right <laughs> past it. Uh, Sometimes you got to just smell the roses, Dave. I Yeah, I don't, I don't love it. But at the same time, I also wonder, like, we watched Devin Booker try to be a point guard last mm-hmm. year at, at a lot of times. Do we necessarily have to get a pure point guard, or can they go after someone who is a combo guard who can play alongside him? I know the thought of a Drew Holiday mm-hmm. may be available a la, or see, I'm sorry, after the AD trade. Do you see the Pelicans trading both of them? I think if they're if they're trying to completely like blow up ship and, and mm-hmm. reload, that would get them the most young talent in the doors mm-hmm. right away. That is not a bad way to do it for a team that you know had one great playoff run in them. I, it's Thank you, Rondo. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. I love Rondo so much. Um, yeah, I think that that one would be interesting. I think if they went after someone like Drew Holiday, mm-hmm. he would really compliment Devin Booker really well. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon has a contract that is up right now. He is an RFA, but the money being tossed around between you know Rumors 14 and $20 million dollars for his contract. So he could be somewhat of interest. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of young, talented players out there who I would take a swing at before I went for a move, like Mike Conley or T. I'm sorry, at this point, Teague like, does nothing for me. He is the, like, bleh well, of I point mean, guards at the NBA level. Like, I would be happier taking, a, I know, homerism aside, Derek mm-hmm. Rose. Yeah. I'd be like, pfft, Well, the thing that Teague does. Even the, Darren Collison. The, the reason why I looked at Teague originally while I was working on my mock as, like, a yeah. kind of Wolves and um, Suns trade is – Teague is 30. Teague is going to be a guy that basically to me is more of that pure point guard of like, he's not going to look to score. He's not going to look to take the points out of Devin Booker's hands. Yeah. He's going to try to get Devin Booker the ball, get these other guys the ball, get more people involved. But is he? But is that going to Because crash? that didn't work so well in Minnesota. Oh, well, I'm not blaming that on him. I'm blaming that on Minnesota. Um, because you Minnesota, someone like Cat, don't give him the ball enough. Yeah. Take away I mean, shots from Cat. Blame that on... Thibodeau. I mean, take I know away were, shots from Cat. They were different. They were different after Thib- Thibodeau was fired. But yep. I blame everything with the T Wolves on Tom Thibodeau. Okay. Um, and him ruining that kind of little situation that they okay. had. You get Jimmy Butler, and I'll, you kind of you poop the bed. Basically, is how you put it. Um, I wouldn't though trade for Jeff Teague either, and that's why I backed off. Even the Spencer Dinwiddie one to me is kind of a little interesting because, like, so you look at Dinwiddie. He's not super, like, he is Mm age-wise the perfect veteran for them to go get. Because he's 26, going to be 27 um, next year. And basically how I look at it is he's not that super old 30 guy. So Mm -hmm. it's like he can still fit in the game. He's just a little bit older than Devin Booker and company. And he's not super expensive. Like, I know next year he's going to jump up to $10.6 million. Still but then eleven point four, then you enter a player op in twenty twenty one for twelve point three. Like yeah. twelve point three million is not a lot to pay considering you look at twenty twenty, Mike Conley thirty four million, Spencer Dinwiddie eleven point four. Hmm, which one would you rather have? No, because I, I'll take the lesser number. Yeah, no shit. Um <laughs> I get that. I just don't know if they would be willing to move Spence. I mm-hmm. mean, maybe if they're really trying to clear up all their cap space, mm-hmm. the Nets could go all in on that kind of a deal. I mean, they already moved the eighteen point five from As, Alan Crab. Yeah, but there's no attachment to Alan Crab. They yeah. signed or they they traded for Alan Crab knowing what they were paying mm-hmm. for because like, hey, look, well, this will be good money to use in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, worst case scenario, he's a spot filler for us for now. He's not mm-hmm. going to hurt us. He's Damari Carroll 
esque, you know? Yeah. And that's that's what they viewed him as. I think that Spence has been awesome because he is someone who like fucking went out and earned it. Like he spent his time in the G League. Mm-hmm. The Bulls passed him up because we're idiots. You know, we we're like, yeah, he's not good enough here. Sorry. Go ahead and get back down no, to the No, they G show what they can do with us, and then another team goes, hey, the audition. When Archie Diacono <laughs> gets brought up by another team, and he just starts dropping 15 a That's night. That's when Dave will buy an Archie Whew. Diacono jersey. I might buy one already. <laughs> we got we got a family custom, resemblance. Cu- custom city jersey with the Archie that Diacono would be dope. on the back? I don't, it doesn't exist, but it would be dope. No, hey, that's how you got to do custom. I think Spence's game doesn't lend itself amazingly mm-hmm. to Devin Booker, but maybe that's just because he hasn't played with someone like Devin Booker. Um, I just... That was my big concern is I know watching him and D'Angelo Russell play together, Mm -hmm. he is a ball-heavy kind of a player. He drives a lot. He can create some contact. But at at the same time, it's just I don't know if that is what they're looking for. I think they're looking for someone who can continue to space out the floor. He's Mm -hmm. only shooting 33% from three. He was taking five attempts a game, so it's a good sample size. But I I don't know that that fit is ideal. But at the same Mm -hmm. time, like I don't know if you can wait for the ideal fit if you're a Phoenix right now. And that's the whole thing. I wonder if is the number to bring back the number six pick, is it one where the ideal trade is Mike Conley? And if that's not the trade, then they're keeping the number six pick. I would not give up six for Mike Conley. And I know that sounds stupid, Mm -hmm. but like that, that is being a prisoner of the moment. Yeah. I think that's us trying to put them on a timeline that they have clearly failed at already. Mm-hmm. Like we we joked around about like how come Devin Booker can't win more games for this team. You know, he had, he was injured a little bit, but also they've they've rested mm-hmm. him heavily, you know, to make sure that he was um getting someone talented to be on his team. Yeah. And it's just they they've made the wrong moves year over year and we we talk about how good of a player he is. It, he's not good enough to win games. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. He's not good enough to win games because when you're such a lopsided, offensively gifted player, you put in no defense. It just you're not going to win anything. So oh. I don't think that the the winning thing is even mm-hmm. a concern, unless you're really concerned that Devin Booker's like, this is shit. I, I know I just signed my deal, but I'm mm-hmm. going to cause a storm and get out of here. Let me ask you this: Is so at the very beginning, I mentioned how there was that insider, that Suns inside reporter, yeah. Yeah. that basically shot down them trading the six. Yep. For Lonzo Ball. Yep. If you're James Jones, do you see value in that? Do you see value in, hey, I'd give up the six for Lonzo Ball? Or are you with the insider of like, no, there's no way they're trading the sixth for Lonzo Ball? Because to me. I swear, didn't his dad or agent come on already say like he won't play in fucking Phoenix? I Because it was the same I, deal as he won't wh- play for. Uh, whatever LeVar says AD is irrelevant. Or to me. Uh, for the Pelicans. Yeah, basically irrelevant to me. Like Alonzo's. I'm the, just saying. Alonzo's the kind of guy where. He the, believed it when he was going to go to the Bulls in that trade. Yeah, so. But I mean. Now like, you're choosing not to believe that he won't play for a team he doesn't want to? For me, I think that Lonzo will play wherever he gets traded because the way Lonzo. Lonzo is not LeVar Ball. Okay. And I've had this opinion. Basically, yeah. since the whole Lavar mania happened, is Lonzo is not Lavar. Mm-hmm. Like Lavar will say, "Oh, Lonzo's not playing here," but when push comes to shove, yeah, Lonzo's a good teammate, and Lonzo is not going to piss off the guys on his team. So if Lonzo gets traded to Phoenix, yep. will he like it? I'm not saying that. Okay, I'm saying he'll play though. Okay. Like Lavar will out be outspoken and angry about it, but. Lonzo will basically do what he's supposed to do because, like, I have seen nothing from Lonzo himself. Right, because he hasn't played, because he's been hurt. And that's the question. Is like, the value to me, there for him? That is the big question is, is it the hurtness and the, the unhealthy, hurtness? Yeah, the hurtness. Or the, the injury concerns? Yeah, the injury concerns <laughs> to me where I am not going to give up that six pick for Lonzo Ball. Yeah, English is tough sometimes, It, it, it really is. Uh, Just like I, reading in English, I look, mean, man. He was Woo. a second overall pick for a reason. Mm-hmm. He's gifted defensively. He's got great size. He's good in the fast break. Because I think he'd fit with this Phoenix team. Full court, he's awesome. I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree that Mm -hmm. he'd be good with this team. I just don't know that the Lakers are willing to move on from Lonzo Ball Mm -hmm. at this point in time. Unless they think they can flip that sixth, keep their fourth pick, flip the sixth pick to the Pelicans for AD. But at the same time, six and Brandon Ingram and Kyle Kuzma for AD. I would even say with the Lakers, try to keep the four. You're not. Use the not. Use the six instead. um, Whether that would happen, yes or no, but. I don't even think AD is getting traded to the Lakers because of what we've talked about before. Like yeah. those remarks that were then backtracked by the owner. Right. I I I vehemently, and yep. I even said that word wrong. Vehemently. Probably. Yeah. I think that she meant it, 
and there's no way he's getting traded to the Lakers. I don't even think AD gets traded to the West. Because if I'm the Pelicans, why would I want him in the West? I don't send think they him, care. I think they just want the best the deal possible for him. And I don't me, know if they're going to trade him soon. That's my problem. Well, and I'm, not I'm saying starting to buy into this. No, I'm starting general. to buy in the shit where they're yeah. like, we're going to start the regular season with Anthony Davis on this team. We're Ooh. going to see what him and Zion Williamson can do together. I, AD won't play. See, AD will do the LeVar Ball thing. It's like, I ain't playing. We'll I ain't see. risking my body when I said I wanted to trade. Um, Anything that you're seeing in let's, the yeah, chat about let, this? Yeah, let's hit up chat. I think there are some good drops in there. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake just been killing it, just talking a whole bunch of shit about Kemba Walker. I saw they Walker. talking Kemba Walker. Yeah, because Kemba's probably not going anywhere because mm-hmm. money is money. And, like, Kemba, if you want to compete for a championship, you also don't go to Phoenix. Yeah. So... That I don't know. Phoenix doesn't have anything that would intrigue mm-hmm. me as Kemba Walker. Uh, yeah. I'm not him, but I'm going to make the decision on his behalf right now and say <laughs> that no. he's going to stay in Charlotte? Sorry. Sorry, Phoenix. No, just sorry, Phoenix. Oh, okay. you're, not, you're not the people who I would go to. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of that, I do love that. Um, there's not there's not a ton on topic. Uh, Jamie reaching out uh, with the Netsky and the Max slots. Do you see the Knicks being bridesmaids instead of brides this offseason? Yeah, it's it's lining up that way, but who knows? Like shit gets crazier on the draft. I mean, with me, the way I see it right now is as a Bulls fan, I've had not much to be excited about. Um, but at least the solace that I could say, and I'm sorry, Knicks fans, is mm-hmm. I can just say, "Ooh, it could be worse." I could be a Knicks fan right now and basically just want to pull all my hair out. I mean, that. every like, year is the same thing. It's it's promise mm-hmm. and failure to deliver. Yeah. That that's what the Knicks are. Mm-hmm. So well, no. the lottery was just getting rigged out of that number one pick because they had the mm. highest odds and then two te- the team with the 6% odd, like, yeah. I'm not getting into that. It was no, rigged. That's no. the bottom line of it. Uh, Jake, thank you for the correction. She, mm-hmm. The owner of the Pels did not say that, by the way. It was a false report. Okay. That was true. That was the, like, second-hand, third-hand. We've heard him, her say this. I will, say, I will say this, then. Get Without confirmed. actually knowing if she said it, yep. I would be shocked if she had not said that at all behind closed doors. I don't think she knows enough about that whole situation to really get involved with the like I refuse to make this trade. I could just see her like, not wanting to trade to how the How many Lakers owners do you know who are like involved in the in the everyday at the minute level that that is? The only way I could see it like happening Like non-Jerry is, Jones owners. No, I'm I'm saying like I could see her making that comment. Yeah. And w- even without knowing the basketball side of it, yep. just because she doesn't want to give AD to Jeannie Buss and the Lakers. Why does she have it out for Jeannie Buss? I don't know. Maybe the, the owners, you're, you're, you're some imagined. owners may hate each other. Some owners mm. may not like each other. They're all millionaires. I don't think they care. Oh, I think there's some owners that can't stand other owners. I'm, I'm sure there's reasons, but I've never heard any it's, public beef it's about like, Jeannie Buss oh, and the owner I'm, of hey, the Pelicans. Not saying it's public, but I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if those were said behind you're reaching, closed doors. You're reaching, um, buddy. What God? What else? What else you seeing that you want to mention, Dave? Ah, uh, no, that's. I, I think that's about it. I think that we're 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 wrapping up the Twitch commentary. Jay, I don't think she knows who's on the Lakers. Yeah, I, I think that's about it for that one. Oh. Put that to bed. But if you are watching us on YouTube, as always, let us know what you guys are um, thinking down below, and also follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod. That's how these great folks who are watching us live. We're able to know that we are live because we did a surprise live stream to kind of test this out. Um, it's not so, so surprising if you watch our past videos. Yeah, we did. We, we did, did give you a clue. It. Well, it's like so we are eventually going to have a schedule in place, but we're kind of working out the gears now we're using there. the fast break as the guinea pig. Ball stomach. I'm hungry. Someone help me. I am too. I'm yeah. super hungry right now. Dave is like, Dave came in like, so food? food I, was, I, was, I was hoping you were going to say before, but we're going mm. after.